Since I started recording the Python for Network Engineers videos, the number one request has been to demonstrate the use of SSH with Python and Cisco devices. So as we can see here, there are a number of requests for SSH and Paramico. This is one of multiple videos teaching you network programmability using Python and GNS3. L, as an example, has even gone further and created an entry on the GNS3 community showing you how to install Paramico and NetMico on the Ubuntu client that I've been demonstrating in these videos. So thanks Al for sharing. I'm gonna demonstrate how to install Paramico using the steps that Al has shared on the GNS3 community. In this topology, I've got an Ubuntu Docker container, which I've configured to use DHCP. That's now booted and got an IP address from the NAT cloud. So as an example, the Ubuntu client can ping google.com. The Cisco switch in this topology has just booted but has no configuration on it. So I'll demonstrate in a moment how to configure SSH on the switch and then we'll configure the Ubuntu client to use Paramico and SSH to configure the switch. The module that I'm gonna use for SSH is Paramico. This is a Python implementation of the SSH version two protocol, which provides both client and server functionality. You can find out more information about Paramico on paramico.org or docs.paramico.org. I've written a script, which I've linked below on GitHub that imports Paramico and uses SSH to connect to the Cisco switch and configure some options on the switch. We'll configure some loopback interfaces and then we'll run a loop to configure VLANs on the switch. So I'm hoping that this video and script help you configure network devices using SSH rather than just relying on Telnet. In this example, I'm using Sublime Text, which is a great text editor. You can find out more about Sublime Text on their website, sublimetext.com. Unfortunately, no one pays me money to recommend these products. This is just stuff that I've found useful and you may be interested in knowing about as well. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is install Paramico and Python on the Ubuntu client. The Ubuntu client has just booted up, doesn't have any configuration apart from an IP address. So what I'll simply do here is follow the list of commands that Al has put on the Genius 3 community, and I'll reference the links below. So install Python, install some additional software, Install pip. I'll use pip to install cryptography. And then we'll use pip to install Paramico. You simply need to wait for the processes to complete. So I'll install Paramico here as well and I'll upgrade pip while I'm here. So once again, Paramico is now installed on the Ubuntu server. So follow these steps if you wanna install Paramico on your Ubuntu client. So that's the Ubuntu device configured. We now need to configure the switch for SSH. So to set up SSH on the switch, the first thing we need to do is configure a host name, which we've done already. Then we're gonna specify a domain name, which in this case I'm gonna call ccie-python.com. Then we're gonna generate some keys, 
So cryptic key generate RSA. I'll use 1024 as the number of bits. So that's been done. I'll specify an enable password of Cisco. And in this example, I'll configure a username of David, password of Cisco, and give David level 15 privileges. On the VTY lines, I'll use the login local command and transport input all. So SSH is now configured on the switch. What we can do now is have a look at our Python script. So we're going to import Paramico. We're also going to import time. You may want to add some delays in your script. And that's what sleep allows you to do. So I'm sleeping one second before I'm outputting the session. When I'm creating the VLANs on the switch, I'm also adding a half a second delay to the loop. Otherwise, I found that the VLANs weren't created successfully. So import Paramico, import time. I'm specifying the IP address of the switch that I'm going to SSH to. So on the switch, I need to configure an IP address of 192.168.122.72. That'll obviously be dependent on your lab. But in this example, I'm using the NAT cloud. So I've been allocated an IP address of 192.168.122.18. So I'm able to ping the switch using that IP address. Username is David, password is Cisco. We're going to use the Paramico client, not the server component. Now, Paramico will reject unknown SSH keys. So we're going to simply accept a public key from the switch in this example. This is not recommended for production, but it's fine for a lab. But then I must ask you, when you SSH to switches in your environment, are you making sure every time that the public keys are correct? If you are, then make sure that you add the correct keys to your host so that Paramico doesn't just accept any key that it receives from the switch. In the GNS3 environment, I'm gonna do that because it's a lab. We're then gonna to connect to the switch with IP address as specified over here, the username as specified over here, and the password as specified over here. You can see in Sublime Text how information is highlighted so it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. So notice IP address is highlighted there. We're then gonna print that we have a successful connection to the switch. In this example, we're gonna invoke a shell. We wanna send shell commands to the switch. Notice this remote connection a variable is using the SSH client, these settings over here, and is invoking a shell and now we are sending commands. Configure terminal, interface loopback zero. Configure an IP address on that loopback. I'm configuring another loopback interface and enabling OSPF. So this is very similar to the first script in this series. But in addition, I thought I'd add the creation of VLANs because that seems to be something that a lot of people are looking for. So we're going to create a VLAN as specified in this range. So VLANs two to 20 will be created. The command that's gonna be sent to the switch is a VLAN, the number here, and carriage return or new line. Then we're gonna specify a description or name on the VLAN, wait half a second, and then loop round. So VLANs two to 20 will be created. I'm then gonna exit out of the Telnet session. We're gonna output information to the console and we're gonna make sure that the SSH client connection is closed. So what I'll do now is copy the script and I'll use Nano to create a file called Python SSH1. 
I'll paste that configuration in the file and save it. And then I'll use Python to run that script. Before I do that, on the switch, show IP interface brief. There are no loopbacks configured. Show IP protocol shows us that OSPF is not running. And show VLAN shows us that only the default VLANs exist. So let's run the script. You can see that it's saying that VLANs are being created. So show VLAN, you can see 10 VLANs existing at the moment. There's 16 VLANs, 17 VLANs. And if I run the command again, show VLAN brief, you can see 20 VLANs have been configured on the switch. Show IP protocols, OSPF is now configured on the switch, show IP interface brief. There are our loopback interfaces. Now to prove this, show user at the moment shows no one connected. I'll run the script again, show user, you can see David is connecting to the switch. You can see the IP address that David connected from. You can see the output on the VTY line. And if we do debug IP SSH and run the script again, you can see that an SSH connection has been made to the switch. I'll end that debug. Now there's a lot of output to the console, so be careful using debugs like that. But just to prove the point, on the VTY line, I'm gonna say transport input SSH. So do show run, pipe begin VTY. Notice only SSH is permitted. So if we try and telnet to the switch, notice the connection is refused. But when we run the SSH script, that connection is permitted because the script is using SSH rather than Telnet. So again, let's create a few more VLANs just to prove the point. I'll create 30 VLANs on the switch. Run the script again. Show VLAN brief. 20 VLANs exist at the moment. But now additional VLANs are being created. And you can see that 30 VLANs have now been created on the switch. So again, we're printing a message stating that a VLAN is being created. The VLAN is then created. A description is added. And a delay of half a second is added. This is an example of how to use Paramico to programmatically configure Cisco devices. In this example, we were running Paramico on an Ubuntu host, and we configured a single switch. In other videos, I'll show you how to configure multiple VLANs on multiple switches, and I'll also show you some other configuration options. Hope you enjoyed the video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.